finally come to the final assembly step of the 3D printed handbag and it is super exciting because you will very very soon have your own designer handbag that you made yourself and that will be an amazing feeling. So I designed this handbag because I wanted one and that was several years ago and I have used it every day since then and I have never received so many compliments for anything I've ever owned as I've had for my handbag. So I'm hoping you will have the same experience. So let's take a look at what you need. So by now you should have the actual bag body with the LED lights. That's a separate tutorial how to make that. If you haven't done that yet, that's okay. You can do that later, but you don't want to miss out on the LED light. Then you need a 3D printed top and front lid. You need a logo, screws, the end buttons, and you need a strap that you hopefully have made. That was a separate tutorial how to make that. So uh, you will need that to finalize the assembly today. Then we need a bit of tools and other things. We need some basic tools like screwdrivers, scissors. You will need a big fat piece of cutters because we are going to cut some steel wire. This is 1.6 millimeter galvanized steel wire. I just bought that in a local store. It's also called a 16 gauge steel wire. This is galvanized. You can use stainless steel. That's nicer, but more expensive and harder to find. So I'm going with galvanized. Ruler is always handy to have a pen. You will need a little bit of tiny bit of glue could be a normal plastics glue. I will explain in the very end what you need that for or a more high end polyurethane glue, which is my favorite. You can also use RTV silicone, which you use to seal things in your bathroom. Then you will need a couple of items, but maybe a little bit harder to find, but there are many alternatives. You need a piece of good tape and we're going to use this to make the bag more quiet. And I will explain what, what I mean with that. This is Kapton tape or polyimide tape, kind of hard to get hold of. It's a high temperature electronics tape. I use it because I have it, but you can use any kind of tape, packing tape, scotch tape, whatever you have. You also need a some kind of slippery plastics. This is a Teflon baking sheet that I am using, but you can use pretty much anything. In worst case, you can just pe cut a piece out of a plastics package and uh, use it for now. And you find something better later, you can replace it easily. And then uh, you've heard me say it before, but it never goes out of fashion. You need to wear your safety glasses as soon as you work with tools. Things can come flying very easily when you cut things, you work on things, always wear your safety glasses. And uh, if you don't think they're very fashionable, Think about them as your superhero glasses that makes you, gives you the powers of building anything you want. So always wear your safety glasses, please. And you can buy these in any hardware store. They're typically just a few dollars or even less. So this is all you need to do the final assembly of the bag. So let's get going. So one of the very distinct features of this 3D printed handbag is the logo. That's really what makes it look like a high end designer handbag. And I often get the question, what does this logo really symbolize? Well, it's simple. It's two nested E's and people ask me, well, why two E's? Well, Chanel has two nested C's and I thought Eva should have two nested E's because this bag is at least as cool, if not cooler than all the fashion houses. So this is just two nested E's uh, that I made in CAD, of course, like everything else. If you are good at CAD, you can make your own logo, but I will leave that tutorial for later. So let's get started by assembling this. You need a logo, you need, need the front lid, and then you need two M3 screws to assemble this. And how this is going together is the screws are gonna go in from the back side these are called counter bore holes. That means that the head disappears into the hole. So it's all flush on the back side. And then the logo has holes on the back side as well. So we have to line these up. So you have to make sure that the logo is in the right orientation because you could technically assemble it upside down and that would look funky. So make sure it's in the right. Then you have to find and look through. So you can, I'm not, okay, there we go. So here we have, the hole 
There you can see the holes line up, and there's no hole lined up, and there are holes lined up. So you start with one. You start with the bottom one. Here it is, lined up. So hold that in a firm grip. Put the screw in. It's a little bit tight. It's meant to be that way. And then screw it in straight in. Be a little bit gentle. It's just holding on to the plastics and you can strip, strip the threads out of it. And if that happens, you would have to glue in the screw instead to hold it together. So let's try the other hole as well. This is a little bit of a 3D printing goo in the way. I just move that out in the way with a screwdriver. So there, there is the hole lined up. There's no hole lined up. So hole lined up. So find a hole, line it up, hold it in a firm grip and then screw in the second screw as well. Of course, it's fighting with me. So the logo should be all flush with the front side and the screw head should have disappeared into the holes on the back side. And there it is. The front lid is all done. That was easy, wasn't it? And if you want to be able to change your style, when for different moods, for different outfits, you can easily print these logos in several colors and just swap them out for whatever you feel like that day. So the next step is to install the hinge pins. So the hinge pins we will make out of the steel wire and we'll take the front lid and the top lid and then put them together. So notice that this has direction. If you try to put it together this way, these little pieces will hit the front lid. So the little bump sticking up should be upwards away from the front lid. So there you go, the front lid, the top lid. And we could do this several ways. So we need to cut the stainless steel wire to the correct length. We can just eye it up if we want to, or we can be a bit more proper and we can measure. So let's measure. So you can see the hinge pin will go from here to here, and we want it a little bit shorter than the actual length so it doesn't stick out. So let's just measure this. So from that edge to that edge for this particular bag, but it may vary, you may have chosen a different size, is about 215 millimeters. 215 millimeters. And I would like the hinge pin to be about 10 millimeters shorter. So about that much shorter on each side. So that would mean if this one is 215 millimeters, I want it 10 millimeters shorter on that side. 10 millimeters shorter on that side, that will be 215 minus 20, so 195 millimeters is what we need this hinge pin to be. So let's take our steel wire, try to straighten that up as best as we can. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. And we don't want to use the inch side, unless you use inches. If you use inches, maybe you want to make your, uh, your hinge pin somewhere a quarter of an inch to half an inch shorter than the total length of the lid. But I'm sticking to millimeter for today, so 195 would be there. To cut this wire, you need some pretty good cutters. These are called diagonal cutters, and you use them for cutting thick things. Uh, if you're borrowing tools from someone, if you find something that looks very sophisticated and expensive, like these nice electronics pliers. Do not use these to cut this wire because the owner of these pliers will be very mad because you will damage the cutting surface and they will never work right again. So don't use these nice little ones. Use the big ones. Sometimes you can find pliers that looks like this. They have a cutting surface in here, so you can cut with there as well. We can try these actually. And these cut nicely. One. There we go. See how easy that is with the right tools. You can also use this to kind of stretch out and uh, straighten out the end a little bit to make it straight. So there it is, our first hinge pin. 
The ends are a little bit sharp, so be careful. If you have a file or sandpaper, you can file it and make it a little bit round, but it's not necessary. So this hinge pin goes in the hole here. And if your 3D printing has come out correctly, your settings were right, this should go in very easily, or at least reasonably easily. Let's put it in and see how it goes. You can wiggle the lids a little bit to get it in, and it will find its way in. If it's hard to get it in, you may want to file down the end a little bit. I will use a plier to help this a little bit. Oh, went out there. Wrong place. Pull it out again and put it in. So pliers like these are always useful to have around, but not necessary, but handy. You could also use the cutters like this if you're a bit careful, you don't want to cut through the wire. And then to push in the last bit, I will just use my screwdriver. There we go. You can also push with the end of the wire to get it a little bit further in. That's about in 10 millimeters here, which means it's about 10 millimeters left in that end. So there we go. There is the first, here's the first hinge all done. Works very nicely, as you can see. So that is halfway as far as hinges go. We have to also do the other side. So the next part will be to make the hinge, hinge pin for the back hinge. And I might point out what you should have done before we came to this step and started here. When the print, the bag is printed, it has a little bit of support right here. You just cut that off with pliers like this. I can actually show you on one that isn't, um, it uh, doesn't have the support removed yet in case you don't ex understand exactly what I mean. So here's a cute little pink bag that I'm working on. And you can see here that this one still has this little support here. It's built into the CAD model and it prints, uh, it's ne necessary for these studs to print correctly. And the same here for the latch, it's necessary for it to be to printing directly. And also you can see the bag has a brim, just as recommended for the printing. To remove these supports, you just use a little, one of these little nice electronics cutters, for example, or you can use a pocket knife or some other suitable tool. But if you have one of these diagonal cutters, you make one cut here, one cut there and you are done. You see how easy that is? So cut in underneath, almost falls out by itself. And then one more cut and you're done. Same thing for this. One cut underneath and in this case it just fell off completely. Be careful to not trim too much off the latch itself. So you want it to fit perfectly so it actually latches on. So just remove this the the um, support and then don't carve any more until you have tried on the lid. So in this case here is the lid for this little bag and we can feel ah that is pretty much perfect as it is just by removing support. So don't carve because you can't put it back again. As for the brim you can pe pretty much just peel that off, most of it. Typically just comes off. And then you can use either a knife or you can use one of the de de deburring tool like this to trim off the last. I'm quite sure that if you are printing something this advanced, you know how to trim off brims and supports without any advice from me. So let's get back to our nice black and red bag and get going on that hinge pin. Okay, so let's measure, in this case it's it's definitely easier to measure than to just do it with it eyeballing it. So let's measure this hinge pin. So note here that we're not measuring from the red to the red edge, we're actually measuring from the black to the black edge, just the whole width 
of the bag. So this is 200 exactly in this model, 200 millimeters, 20 centimeters, or if we are in inches, just shy of eight inches. So let's stick to millimeters for now. So we want to make it uh, 20 millimeters shorter, so 10 millimeters on each edge. So 200 minus 20, that is 180. So 200 minus 20, that's 180. So let's get our wire. Let's straighten it out and we said 180 millimeters. That will be to here. And I will show you if you have a, if you have pliers like this, you cut it. You use not out here, of course, but the cutting part of it, and it also cuts very nicely. I didn't tell you that you need to have a file for this job, but I happen to have a file here, so I will just show you how you would do if this gets very sharp and you don't like that you can just file it off to make these nice and round it would also make it easier to insert into the hinge but it's not at all necessary you can do the same thing with sandpaper There we go, that's significantly nicer and rounder. Okay, so we have our hinge pin. Try to straighten it out as, as well as I can with my hands. And then let's insert it. You see it goes in much easier, and that is probably because we file off the ends. And push it down. So we're getting to the final step of the final assembly and this is really what takes this just from a pile of 3D printed pieces to an actual bag that we can use. So we need a strap that we have already assembled. We need a bag of course which now has the lids and the logo. We need these two end caps or end buttons I call them in the files and we need two M5 screws. So I like to take a look at the strap. And then I want, if you look at the strap swivels, we have this top, uh, nice surface that was on top when we 3D printed it. And then on the other side, we have the back surface, which is typically not as pretty. If you printed mirror images, as the instructions said, then you will have one side of the strap that is kind of prettier than the other. So I like to put that forward towards the front of my bag. So this is the nice surface i will turn it and then i will put it on like this so the nice top surface becomes forward so the strap is really easy to install you just put it over the stud like this and you take an end button screw put the screw through the end button put the end button on top and then you just screw in the screw and then you tighten up down gently again we're just putting the screw into plastics the end button and the stud is a little bit longer than the swivel is wide so even if you tighten this down it will nicely pivot so let's repeat it on the other side End button screw into the hole and then just tightening it up I chose 10 millimeter long screws you can have them a little bit shorter but 10 makes it for sure secure 
And there we go, nice and snug. And here is your finished bag. Isn't that just awesome? Well, so I am totally in love with these bags. I've made it for myself and so many people are asking for these bags and that's why I'm making these tutorials and making the files available for download. But one thing I discovered, I love this pivoting design with the studs, but it's actually quite noisy. You can hear that. And that's not such a nice thing when you walk down the street and you sound like, I don't really know what it sounds like, but it doesn't really sound luxurious. So I figured out there's actually ways of making this sound less. And that is where the tape and the baking sheet comes into the picture. So the sound is made, is generated by the swivel rubbing against the 3D printed surface on the stud and, and on the wall and on the end cap as well, end button as well. But we can put in a layer, it's basically a lubricating layer. If this was a machine, you would probably have bearings and, and, and grease, but that is way too complicated and would be just much more difficult to make than this 3D printed solution. So I came up with the idea to put a slippery plastic layer between the 3D printed pieces to make it significantly quieter. So if you're in a hurry to run to a party right now, you're fine, you can take your bag, it works great, it's all finished now. It has the light, it has the lid, you can take off. But if you want that really luxury feeling and don't like this loud no noise, let's hang in for a few more minutes and I will show you how we make these silencing pieces for the bag. So let's start by taking off the strap because we have to get in here and make these pieces. So we'll take off the strap and take off the end button because we will need that. So what I would like to do is that I would like a piece that sits on the outside here between the end button and the swivel and I like a piece that sits in here between the bag and the swivel. And you may ask, okay, how do we know what size these needs to be? Well, it happens to be that we have some things that have the right sizes. So for sitting in here, the hole, of course, have to have the same size as the hole in the swivel, and the outside should be probably about the same size as the end button. For out here, we want something of the size of the end button, and it needs a hole in the middle for the screw. So I just take this, this sheet and I need two of each dial. So I need a total of four pieces. So let's draw this up and then the inner hole. So one for one side, one for the other side. And then I need the inner one that needs a bigger hole. I will draw the outer first. And then I will use the swivel itself. Try to get it approximately in the middle. Probably would have been easier to do it the other way. Not quite in the middle, but I will adjust for that when I cut it. Okay, that is good enough to cut. So it's probably good, better to have a really small pair of scissors but this is what I have right here, so this is what I will use. So I'm cutting out this, the outer, and then let's cut out the inner. So these pieces will be hidden as long as we don't make them too big. So it doesn't really matter what color the material is that you make them from. Because they shouldn't, they shouldn't be visible. Let's see if that hole is big enough. Mm. Yeah, that will do. It's a little tight, but it's stretched out. And there is our inner, inner bearing surface. But 
let's wait with this yeah actually let's leave it in there we can do it in this order what we need to do next let's cut the other one first and then we will assemble it all at the same time i'm gonna cut it a tiny bit smaller than the end button so it doesn't stick out and becomes visible like that and then cut the center for the hole for the hole <laughs> cut the hole for the screw and there it goes and then the screw just goes right through it so that will cover the surface on the end button on the back but we also want to cover the surface on the stud here so that's where this tape comes into play So let's put it from the underside because that is actually where the biggest load is and then wrap it around the stud and i probably like to cut this off we don't want this we don't want this tape actually we do need it's so wide we have to cut it off There it is. So now we have this uh, the slippery surface on the stud and slippery surface on the bag. So let's just uh, assemble it again. So just put it on. And screw it back together. You can feel it's much easier to screw it back together this time because we made the threads in the plastics with the screw. And you can hear if you compare it, this one is almost silent, and that one is really loud. So you can see this makes a big difference in how quiet the bag becomes, and it gives a much more luxury feeling. So let's do the other one as well. So here it is, the handbag is almost done. So we have the sound dampeners in the, in the strap. See, that's a huge difference. It's much more luxurious feeling and much less annoying. It's all working wonderfully. You have the lights, the hinges. There's one thing you must do left, and that is quite important. And you will discover it the very first day if you don't do it and that is you need to put glue into the end holes of the hinges so the reason for this is as you use the bag you're wearing it it's, it's moving around you're opening the lid closing the lid showing it off to everybody the hinge pins tend to walk out and the end will come out and if you just cut it off with the pliers and even if you have sanded it down or, or filed it, it will snag on your clothing and it may actually cut you or injure you. So you need to take a little bit of this glue, just a tiny little droplet of glue, and put it into the hinge hole. And I like to use plastic gloves when I handle glue because you really shouldn't get it on your skin. So you can use plastic glue, you can use polyurethane glue, RTV, whatever you have handy. But just take a little bit of glue, put it into the hole, and then I like to push it in with my finger and make sure you don't get too much glue anywhere else because it will be ugly. So let's do this on all, all four hinge holes. A so little bit of glue, push it in with a finger. If you don't have plastic gloves, you can use, for example, an ice cream stick or something else to push the glue in with. And when you have glue on your fingers, make sure you don't touch any surfaces because it will leave stains. So really important to do. Don't forget, don't skip the glue because the hinges will come out and you will be very annoyed when it ruins your clothing 
or injuring you. So there we go. We are all done now. So the last thing to go in was the glue. Here is the final bag. I think it's amazing. And I have seen people just opening and closing this lid in awe. They just couldn't believe how nice the hinge works and that it's all 3D printed. But this is just so cool. So I was in, once invited to national TV here in New Zealand to talk about my racing program. And pretty much all we talked about was the 3D printed bag with a light in it. And that is, is, is the, the reality is that often people are more interested in my bag than they are in my racing program. And that's okay with me because I am totally obsessed with both racing and handbags. So you are all done. Go out, enjoy your bag, stuff it full with your stuff. And feel proud that you actually made this thing yourself. I think that the ability of making things with my own hands is my superhero power and there's no greater satisfaction in life and I like to say and it's really true is that a small successful project is a gateway drug into bigger projects including being an engineer as your profession so enjoy your bang and hope to see you soon again